All right, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the video of Tower of Fantasy. My name is Vinicius and let's we'll go with you. All right, guys, in this Tower of Fantasy video, I'm going to talk about Tower of Fantasy in 2024 on the PlayStation 5 console. Um, I used to play Tower of Fantasy a lot when it first came out. I played it almost exclusively only, like, every single day on PC, and then I was overjoyed when it came out on PS5 because the controls were kind of jank, and then I really enjoyed it on PS5, but there were some things that just sort of fell short, and ultimately, I quit playing the game, and I've been off of Tower of Fantasy for a long time, and a lot of viewers who subbed to me for Tower of Fantasy they would always come to my streams and other videos and ask if I ever get back on TOF. So I finally decided to get back on TOF and give it a try. I've been playing it for a solid week, two weeks now, and I'm going to give you my honest opinions on Tower of Fantasy in 2024. I think it's yet yeah, September 1st, 2024. And uh, it maybe if you are like me, you got off the game because you thought it was just lacking in some areas and you want to see what it's like right now, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. So I'm going to break it down into... Uh, a couple different uh, topics talk about why I started liking the game and the areas where it fell short and then why I actually left and then talk about uh, the good things that I like so far since playing so that's what I have typed down here I'm just talking about that all right so um, basically the reason why I started playing the game in the first place was because it's an anime game and it's an MMO game and it's a gacha game and I thought it was like Genshin but a lot better and I really enjoyed playing it I enjoyed seeing the characters I enjoyed the weapons that were there and I really enjoyed the fact that your basic attacks really meant something because I don't know for whatever reason in Genshin Impact I didn't like the fact that your basic attacks just didn't mean anything I know it's just very small detail and there's a lot of little small details like that that I really just enjoyed about um, Tower Fantasy and the fact that you could play with more than just three other people you could play with like a whole server of people a whole group of people you could play with nobody if you didn't want to you could play with just a group of people and there's some content that you needed a lot of people for now where it kind of fell short was when the um the initial explosion of people playing the game on playstation sort of died down it was very very hard to do content and when you did do content there's a good chance that the only people that you're going to be playing with are people that are whales that you know spent eighty thousand dollars on their game and if you're trying to dps it was just pointless to try and dps and like all the servers that they had it was just people were just spread out too far and in, in between and it was just it was hard to like play the content that you needed content uh, you need people for to do the content and have it be a fun experience so that's one of the main reasons why i dipped off the game and then there was, there was some youtube stuff where people were just talking about me and my builds but that's neither here nor there to this video but um as far as the game um, goes and the characters it's just it was very hard to get the characters to a comfortable level once you did pull for them you had to get their mattresses there and then the one one of the other main things that really got me off the game were the gold banner stuff because there are a lot of gold banner weapons that i liked and for those gold banner weapons and mattresses to be of any relevant use in the current game where you were at um, you had to have those weapons pretty strong and it just seems like the game the devs and however they did their system of do doling out you know rewards or whatever it was just extremely difficult to get those gold banner uh, items that you needed to make the gold banner weapons that you like to use strong enough to be of of any use you know you could use them but it's just trash and you could get a gold banner weapon honestly back then up to like a5 a6 and still it would be trash so the fact that they wouldn't just freely give you the tools and the items necessary to just max out all those gold banner weapons was just it was just a, just i don't know that just to me it was a deal breaker so that's one of the main reasons why i just hopped off the game and and then the the final nail in the coffin was the mattresses you know it was very difficult to get the the matrixes for those gold banner weapons and you just the amount of matrix chips that you need to make the chips actually worth it is just ridiculous and the fact that they didn't give you that is just it's beyond me and the the methods that they did give you did give you to get those things it was ridiculous and it was just like they want you to like break the bank to pay play the game and not only that you had to get the new current weapons on the red banner weapons the red banner mattresses and it was just it was just it was just like yeah i don't know i, I was too much so i hopped off the game for a while so i recently came back and there are like some really cool changes that they did that actually make me think that yeah they have listened and they are back on track so um the first thing that i want to talk about is the return request and the returner store so when i got back on the game obviously i had weapons um from before and then i had the new weapon nola that i just got when i got back on the game but i need to level up those weapons to current levels so i could you know fight and and be um, effective in battle and stuff like that and not just get one shot whatever but the returner store is just that you return and they just give you items that 
aren't available to people who have been playing the game. You do a bunch of quests that are stuff you're just going to be doing anyway playing the game, and you get a lot of currency. Now, I'd been off the game for about maybe a year, maybe two years or something like that. And whenever I would randomly log on, you know, throughout those two years, I would do some stuff and then just hop off. But whenever I got back, I didn't know I had so much of the returner store currency. It was actually ridiculous how much I had. I had so much that I was able to do 64 pulls on the gold matrix um, summoning thing. And then I could do the same thing like 64 on the gold matrix. I mean, gold, the gold summoning like characters and stuff like that. So, uh it was actually wild that I was able to just do that. And also in the Turner store, they had, you can buy just a gang, a crap load of weapon level up materials that you would need. Matrix level, like the weapon, the materials that you need to level up your matrices, just everything that you need from the Returner store to make your character strong, you, you got. I was able to take the NOLA that I got, which is another strong like point. Usually whenever, or before when I left, I would do, you know, pulls or whatever. And this might just be random RNG luck or whatever, but I didn't spend any money on the game beyond what I spent to get my new character skin that I like for my male avatar. And I didn't spend any money on the game. I just used whatever things they gave me. I think I might have spent like 99 cent on like five red nucleus or something like that that they're doing like a deal on or something. So I did that once and I got NOLA. And then I got NOLA's first um, advancement. You know, basically just for playing the game. And I thought that was really cool because one of the things that I had an argument on uh, to why I left as, you know, being a YouTuber game, even though they the, the game was kind of helping me out with stuff, it's just that I didn't have enough resources to get the characters I wanted to, the levels that I needed them to be to do the content comfortably, you know, the stronger and higher tiered content. You know, I was just getting blown out of the water by the whales and whatnot. So um, I was always like, they're not... The, the drop rates for these things in the pools is just bad. So I don't know if they up the drop rate for whatever reason, but I got no lip like twice. And every time I do a gold banner summon, I don't have to go to the 80 pool pity to get whatever I, I'm putting. I get stuff, you know? So I think the drop rates are a little bit better for the pools. I don't know if that's actually fact, but it, it feels like it is. Um, so returner quest, returner store, I mean, that's great. If you've been off the game, get back on the game and you can get some free stuff and those gold banner weapons that you like, you're going to be able to get those. Like, it's just ridiculous. Um, next, um, yeah, I already talked about gold banner summons and matches being more accessible. So, um, yeah, there are just a lot of things that you can do in the game now as far as quests that I've been doing that give you gold nucleus so you can do those gold banner pulls. And also, like, I think there's something going on now where... Um, if you join, I think they've got like a, a monthly thing or whatever. I'm not exactly sure exactly what it is, but for rewards, when you log in a certain number of times, you get like 10 gold nukes, 10 um, gold matrix, you know, pull thingies. And it's just that coupled with the new stuff in network and the stuff that I missed back over in like Aquaville, I was just able to get a lot of gold nucleus and I was able to just do a lot of summoning on things that I really wanted that mattered to me. Not necessarily things that are like top tier, but things that really matter to me. Like I wanted my Meryl to be as strong as possible. And now my Meryl is really strong. So um, stuff that just matters to me, they were able to like finally do. Cause I always thought it was just dumb, bro. These gold banner weapons, no one's going to use them. They are actually kind of pointless. And the only things that you really should be using in these matches or in the, the game are like the red nucleus stuff. And it was just so hard to get those. And I was just like, well, if no one's gonna be using these gold banner weapons and gold banner matrices anyway, well, maybe not so much the matrices people use the matrices but the gold banner weapons we're not going to be using them anyway they need to be giving those away for free all right so and it looks like now they they are pretty much doing that they're giving you more ways to get that gold banner stuff down and also they've updated the gold banner list like i got i can't think of the 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 chick she's a physical she's got the whip with the the playing cards I got her on the gold banner. I've never seen that character before. I also got the maid character with that gun. I don't know who she is because I'm never going to use these characters. I mean, I might one day, but the fact that I was able to get these off gold banner when they were once like red banners, they look basically it's just really good. They're updating that gold um, banner list. And because they are updating that gold banner list with better weapons, um, you know, that's that's a W for me. It makes me want to play the game more because like when you first start the game and they give you all these resources, you can go 
hunting for the black crystals you can go hunting for all these things so you can keep doing more pulls that's what initially pulled me into the game i was able to just oh i want this skin or i want to get this character this next advancement all i got to do is farm for these crystals and i can do another 10 pull that's really what drew me into the game in the beginning and i love doing that and it seems like they've brought that same feeling back inside of me which is like a w uh, let's see Nola being pretty good. My own main weapon is still pretty, pretty good. Okay, so um, I got the new weapon, like I said, Nola at A1. And Nola is absolutely a monster. When you first log back into the game, or when I log back into the game, they let you play with the weapon for like a day or two at level 190. And I was like, yeah, this weapon is super strong. If I get it, I've got to get it as strong as possible. So I got it, and I was able to get it to 170. Then I was like, these resources that I got, they are abundant, but they're not like infinite. And I wanted to level up some of the other weapons that I had. So a lot of the older weapons that I like to use that were at like 150, 140, I was able to get them to 150 160 because of the returner store the returner quest and then dailies and stuff like that um but nola is absolutely amazing super strong at first i wasn't really feeling that she turns like she has a motorcycle as a weapon but now it's kind of grew on me i like that she has a sword because i'm a sword person so nola is really good she's very strong it helps me kind of breeze through content that i like that a lot and the fact that the old weapons that i enjoyed um and people are always saying it's going to be power creep this power creep that I still think that Nanyin is still really good. I think that Fiona is still really good. I think that Mimi is ridiculously good, you know? And when I was on stream and, and talking to people in the chat, they're like, yeah, Mimi is still like top tier. And, you know, before people were just saying things like, yeah, Mimi's going to get power creep. She's going to get nerfed. Like, and she's just not going to be as strong to make people want to get the new character. And I don't know, maybe I'm faded. Maybe I just am not in the know. But this is just what I feel, and if somebody wants to, like, pick on me or talk trash about me because of what I feel, I can only go off of what I feel and what I, um, you know, in the game that I play. And I feel like the weapons that I like to use that were, you know, the old meta, they're still really good. Nemesis, I st still really, really good. I can still go in and use those weapons to great effect. The weapons that were meta, they, they didn't seem to be, like, nerfed at all, especially with all these new weapons that have come. There's, like, five or six new weapons that I didn't even see, like some, like, anchor lady with a in that spear with I, I don't even know what these weapons are but um being that these new weapons came out i would imagine they would have sort of nerfed the old weapons that were kind of op like nanyin and you know fiona would like that but they didn't or at least it feels like they didn't and the weapons are still really good to use and i was very very happy with that and i was gonna think like whenever i first locked back in i was like if the weapons that i like to use my loadout if it's trash i'm gonna be super disappointed and my loadout it's still it's still good it's still valid maybe it's kind of boosted a little bit because i do have nola but it is what it is. All right. Um, another thing is they've got a new Meryl coming sometime in September this month. I'm not exactly sure on that, um, but people have told me December or September rather is when new Meryl's coming out. I saw the trailer for it. Thank you, Mari, on my Discord for linking me the video on Gateo's channel showing you uh, showing me the the new gameplay of Meryl. And as most of you know, if you've been with me for a while, Meryl is probably my favorite weapon like in the game. Like, I love gigantic swords, and I think that Meryl's weapon is so good, and it makes me happy that they're making a new Meryl that's a Volt type. So that's one more thing that I cannot wait for. Giant sword and Volt, because Volt is, like, my favorite element in the game. So that's really, really good. I'm happy for that. Now, uh, the network map. I want to talk about that, too. Network map. At first, I was kind of skeptical because it's like... I see this new game they're coming out, Never to Everness or whatever, and it's basically looking like a GTA game. And then I saw Network, and it's like they want to make this like a precursor to that game. And I was like, oh, I don't know. But then after I played it for a while, I was like, this is actually kind of genius. They have a gigantic city that's essentially kind of like a GTA map, I guess. But there's not, it's not super populated like GTA, I guess. But it's a huge map. You can get in a car. You can go down streets, go down avenues, go to different parts, just driving in your car, your vehicle, whatever the case may be. And it really makes me happy that they have mounts because one of the things that turns me off of Genshin every single time is no mounts. You got to go here, you got to go there, you got to travel all over the mount, uh, map, and you have to do that by, you know, getting these teleport things and teleport here, then you got to go through all this rigmarole, and that's the main reason why I stay off of Genshin. And they sort of, like, we did away with that in Tower Fantasy. You can hop on a mount, and they made it real easy to use these mounts because most of these mounts are vehicles. I'm sorry if this video was super long. I've only got like one or two more things to talk about, then it's going to be over with. And I appreciate you for bearing with me. And if you've been with me for this long, I didn't even say it. Um, do me a favor, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and turn notifications on. I've been streaming like crazy. I'm going to start uploading videos for Tower Fantasy. This is going to be sort of the first one to kick off for the month. See how it goes. If you like this and you want to see more, definitely hit that thumbs up button, man. I would really appreciate it if, if 30 of you watching 
watching this video can give it a like that would be amazing if i see 30 likes that really just encourages me to keep going with these types of videos um all right so with that out of the way network is a great map i enjoy it it's just awesome to look at it's better than just having to go up this mountain and fall down here and just it's it's to me it's just an easy map to navigate and i think that is probably the best thing for me like Genshin impact has these beautiful maps super difficult to navigate to find the things that you need to farm um and i just like that uh and the last thing i want to talk about is the server merge now this i'm going to tell you the truth all right I, i'm not going to sugarcoat it i'm because you know no one's paying me to make this video i'm making this video on my own so um the server merge when i heard that it happened i thought it was a good thing you know i was like whenever they did the first server merge and they didn't include server one like america one which is what i'm on i was kind of disappointed i was like because it's very hard it was very hard back then to do content like i said after the initial explosion of tower fantasy just sort of wore off people gradually sort of left the game and the only people playing were the whales and there were some people that were like me that were like small dolphins that were still out there in the water so to speak um but we were on different servers and we couldn't play together we couldn't do stuff together so they finally um did a merge and they put all the ser like most of the servers together so everybody can play together and i thought that was going to be great and i've been on stream a couple times and i thought that basically just because of the server merge i wouldn't have problems you know queuing up and finding people to do the content with now i'm not going to say that merging the servers is a bad thing because that is a great thing because you can have more people to play with however i'm going to be honest with you and I, I wanted this to be a good thing to talk about because it is but essentially there's still just it doesn't seem to me there to be enough people playing and i would queue up to do content and i think that if i queue up to do content kind of like i did back in the day just randomly queue up at any time to do like a a four-man operation or a raid or something like that i should instantly be put with people and yeah it's that's just it's you're not you're not you still have to go lfg you have to look for people and i guess that's where the crews sort of you know uh come into play luckily i'm streamer i have a few friends that still play the game that can put stuff together i can stream and i can like get people to do the content if i really wanted to do the content like that but i still think that with all the server merges you know being what it is um it shouldn't be that difficult to do content and this is nothing on the game the game can't control how many people are playing all they can do is just you know give out rewards and show people that hey the game is more fun now it's more accessible there's more stuff to do and it's it's just worth your time to play um and i guess it's on it's on the game they have to do that with their socials they have to do that with their marketing team and so far it doesn't look like they're doing a super great job i mean I've, i'm following them on their socials i'm following them on on uh, twitter i'm following them on youtube and i see their content i see their uploads and it's just i don't know i think that more people if more people got back on the game more people started the game then it would be a lot better to play the content but so far it's just yeah just going in solo by yourself to do like harder content you, you really have to, like, get a group together. And that's probably the only thing that negative that I can say about it so far. Um, as far as the controls go, because I know a lot of people were kind of iffy about that. That's the reason why a lot of people left, because the controls were so, like, weird and, like, buggy. Um, they're still the same way. I wanted to say that the controls are different. I played the game for, you know, a couple of hours um, every day trying to get a feel for it again. And I can say with 100% certainty that the controls are still jank. Um, the only thing that saves it is that you can press a button on the touchpad right here and you can sort of bring up a cursor and you can manually click on whatever it is that you want to click on. But without that, if you're just trying to use the D-pad to navigate to this, to that, to this, to that, it's very janky. Like today I was in a group with one of my friends and they were telling me how to turn the damage numbers off and in the settings you have to go down, then you have to turn the cursor on and then you can keep scrolling down. That is absolutely insane. Like, I should have just been able to just scroll down by pressing the down analog stick or the down D-pad instead of having to turn the whatever off to get down to the bottom. So there's still a lot of things that they need to work out when it comes to the controls. But, you know, it is what it is. It's not a perfect game. It was meant to be a PC game that was ported onto console. All right, so that's it, man. Um, 
and the question that probably you, you want to have answered, do I think you should get back on the game? Is it worth your time to get back on the game? I'm going to say, yeah, it's definitely worth your time to get back on the game to at least see if you enjoy it. If not only for the fact that they are really giving stuff away now, they are really just giving stuff away. And I think that with a game like this that is on the decline, that has a lot of competitors that are just doing way better at what they're trying to do. They definitely need to start giving stuff away. I mean, there's some stuff that they are robbing you absolutely blind for, and that's for the whales. But for the most part, there is stuff that they're giving away for free. And if there is a big enough community of people that are dolphins and lesser dolphins, you know, minnows, um, I think we can have a really fun game. So I definitely think you should get back on the game if you haven't already. If you've never played the game before and you sort of like gotcha games, you sort of like anime games, you like MMO games, I think this is a great game and you should definitely give it a try at least. I'm not going to say you're going to love it because you may get on it and you may hate it. You may get on it and you may say, hey, this is fun. It is what it is. All right, that's going to be it for me. I am sorry for <laughs> it being such a long video. I thought it was honestly going to be like a five-minute video, but I had a lot to say about it that I didn't even realize. All right, so that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.